some really big news out of, of all places, Meta, with some brand new AI models for us to play with. Let's get into the announcement. So Mark Zuckerberg recently went on Facebook in just like a normal casual looking post and he announced the first few Llama 3 models. Now the big thing about Facebook is even though Facebook is one of those companies, or I should say Meta rather, that is on par with Microsoft and Google and Amazon and therefore they are one of these companies that could afford to really just like have their own enormous model like what Google's trying to do, what OpenAI does, what Anthropic does, and keep it closed. One of the things that Meta has done that I think is really gutsy and actually really almost redeeming for this company is the fact that they have made their models open source, meaning that any developer can take those models and build upon them and improve them for a specific use case. And in fact, a lot of the best sort of fine-tuned open source models that we've seen were actually built on the backs of Llama 2. With Llama 3, we're gonna see a lot more of those and we may even see a couple of fine-tuned models that are specifically built for writing fiction or for potentially any other use case that we could want it for and that those models may actually end up being really, really good for the kind of things that we talk about on this channel, like writing and uh, brainstorming and creativity and all those kinds of things. So the fact that this is open source is already a big deal, but let's get into the announcement and point out a couple of things here. A lot of this is sort of built more for developers and things like that, but they do have a couple of benchmarks here. And notice that they haven't, they're not really comparing these to any major models out there, but they are comparing it to others that are in this ballpark, in this field. And so, for instance, there are two models that Meta has released. The first is the Laman 3 8 billion parameter, which is small enough you could probably run it on a phone or any local computer. And then there's the 70B Llama 3 model, which is a little bit beefier, but still really, really fast. And again, this is all free and open source. So keep that in mind. If we had to pay for it, then maybe I'd be a little more critical of some things, but this is absolutely free and fully integrated into Meta's apps and systems. So the 8 billion parameter model in all of these different benchmarks stacks up better than Google's Gemma 7B and the Mistral 7B Instruct, which is one of the leading open source models out there. And often by a whole lot, like the human evaluation is way higher. And then the 70B, model when stacked up against Gemini Gemini Pro 1.5, which I tested in a previous video, and Claude 3 Sonnet, which is the uh, lesser but still pretty powerful Claude 3 model, the, the less expensive model, it also stacked up against uh, all of those for the most part. And another thing that we learned recently is that they are not done yet. There is another Llama 3 model that is still being trained and being developed, and that one has 400 billion parameters, which means it'll be most likely way ahead of some of the leading models out there, including the Claude 3 family and including GPT-4. Although we'll really just have to wait until it comes out to test for ourselves. But I'm assuming that that model will also be open source, and I can't wait to get my hands on it. But we can get our hands on the these first two models by going to meta.ai and playing around with this. And by the way, Meta is also in the process of integrating this AI seamlessly with pretty much all of his apps. So if you have Facebook, if you have a WhatsApp, if you have Instagram, all of those things will likely have some form of AI integration in the near future if it doesn't already. And I'm actually kind of excited about that because there are a lot of haters on Facebook and Instagram. And I just feel like, I don't know, it's just a little, little bit of a satisfaction knowing that they're going to be on this platform that is clearly making great strides in AI. And it's going to be in their face to a point that they can't ignore it. So either we're going to see more people coming over to the light side, or we're going to see a lot of people leaving these platforms, which, you know, having received quite a bit of hate about AI myself, on these platforms, I just gotta say, good. But I'm not bitter at all. So let's go actually test this out a little bit on meta.ai. If we come down here to where it says login with Facebook, it does actually give me a message that the messages with AI may be used to improve AI at Meta. That's pretty standard for any of these chatbots. All of the chatbots will usually be using your things. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. 
because I understand how model training works, I do not worry about this at all. I could put my entire novel in here and just not care because I know it's not going to be used in any way that uh, I would not want. But if that is a concern to you, then I would recommend accessing Llama 3 through other means other than this chatbot. So let's go ahead and run through some of the standard prompts that I go through for writing. I want to do some, some writing prompts here. So we'll say brainstorm 10 log lines, brainstorm 10 log lines for a sci-fi beach romance using Blake Snyder's log line format. And it's giving me 10 log line ideas. So we have when a surf instructor discovers a mysterious underwater portal, she must team up with a charming alien to prevent an intergalactic disaster and confront their forbidden love. After a beachside encounter with a time-traveling stranger, a small-town lifeguard must navigate a complicated romance and prevent catastrophic failure. Okay, these aren't too bad. Some of them are a little, like, random. Like, where? okay, where did you get that? But at the same time, this is about the same level of quality as I would expect from... Uh, a lot of the other models that I've used. I like this one. After discovering a mysterious underwater city, a thrill-seeking surfer must navigate treacherous politics and forbidden love with a captivating mermaid. Okay, so let's go ahead and take that one. I'm going to give it a outlining template to follow. I'll say, let's go with number eight. Using that concept, write a full novel outline using the following outline template. If I paste in my template, Okay, and something went wrong. So my guess here is that it's not able to handle how large of a template I threw in there. I, the context window is a lot smaller than some of the others. And that's one of the things that Mark Zuckerberg said is that they're working on increasing the context windows. Uh, I'm going to try again just to see if it works. Nope. Okay. But one of the things you can actually do with this is you can actually ask it to create images. Much like ChatGPT, you can create images through Dolly 3. And so let's go ahead and test that out right now. Let's imagine you wanted to create an ad for a sci-fi beach romance. Okay. So let's say create a stunning vista of a beach with a sci-fi city in the background and a human man talking to a mermaid. Okay, so we'll just see how that goes. Okay, and we've actually got something here. We got a mermaid, a man, we have the sci-fi city. It got all of the elements correct. There's something a little wonky going on with her face and a few things that look a little bit like AI art from a generation ago. So it, it, it doesn't quite hold up, I would say, to a lot of things. Whoa, look at this one. My gosh, that dude is ripped. This one's actually a little bit better, I think, in terms of the faces and things. This one is very interesting. Not what I asked for, but kind of like, I don't know, this sort of gets my creative wheels turning a little bit. And then we have this one, again, kind of just a nice example of what I asked for. It definitely has all of the elements there. Just something a little off about the faces, for sure. And I know I could get better results from Ideogram or Midjourney or even Dolly 3 than what I'm seeing here. But there is a really cool feature here that you don't get any in any of those platforms. There's a space here where you can say animate. And so what I think that this whole system is going to be really good for is creating like little things that are kind of fun for social media, right? So I wouldn't use this for anything where I actually want to use the art in a serious capacity, like incorporating elements into a book cover or creating actual artwork for uh, an advertisement or something like that. But what I would do, I think this can be a fun way to engage with fans. So creating uh, a meme or just a quick little GIF or something like that. That's all these are. They're just really quick little animations. And her face is definitely looking weirder by the second here. Let's look at this one. Yeah, there's something weird going on with his hand here at the end. But uh, we've got just a little bit of an animation. This one's kind of cool. It looks like he's emerging from the water. And of, of the four, I think this one is the nicest one. If we did something a little bit simpler, like give me a stunning an image of a dragon in anime, anime style. We get, actually, these are quite beautiful images here. I love these. Look at that. Like, that's that's cool. I was thinking a little bit more of like a flat 2D anime style, but I'll take this. It looks great. And then if you hit animate for this, you get some pretty cool animations here. So I think like something like this could be a great way to create social media content to engage with readers or with your audience or whoever. Like, yeah, just look at that. That's awesome. Uh, I love the look of that. And these animations, although they are brief, are pretty cool and pretty consistent with with itself. So as a fun little social thing, I think this is great as an actual 
way of using the art for, I don't know, commercial purposes. I just don't think it's quite there yet. Uh, but but it's cool and it's definitely going in some cool directions and maybe when we get that 400 billion parameter model we'll see some better results there all right there's another thing i want to test out and that is headlines so i'm going to take the book description from one of my books we're going to go to the ai platform and the reason i want to test this is because in the past i actually found that llama 2 wasn't too bad at headlines and the reason for that, I think, makes sense because Meta has access to so many ads. And not only do they have access to the ads that people have created on the Facebook platform, but they also have the data from those ads so they know which ads perform really well. And that's the kind of thing that you could tell an AI and it could make sense of it and say to potentially create some really high performing ad copy. So let's go ahead and say... Given the following book description, craft 20 high-performing ad headlines for a Facebook ad. Then I give it the book description, and let's see what it gives me. And all right, and we have Unleash the Magic Within, Discover Your Hidden Powers, Join Jack's Epic Quest for Self-Discovery, Demons on the Hunt, Heroes Rise. Some of these aren't too bad. They're a little generic, but what they aren't is overblown. So many of the other platforms give me headlines that just aren't good headlines at all these are at least quick and to the point which is something I like this one out of shadow into the light you know playing on the title of my book so i'm going to ask it to say i'm going to ask it to refine these try again and make sure the headline has a good hook and creates a sense of mystery that will intrigue a potential buyer to click all right and it's giving me a bunch some of these still aren't that great but a couple of them the demon attack was just a beginning isn't bad Beware the darkness that lurks within. The fate of the kingdom hinges on one girl's secret. These are definitely better than what I was getting before. And these are definitely better than what I get out of most AI tools these days. So I, I stand by that. I think Llama is definitely one of the better models to use for ad copy. But actually, I'm curious to know how well does it write? Now, I'm not expecting much out of this, remember, because this is free. This is open source. I think where we will see these models shine is when developers take them and create fine-tuned models around a specific type of task. So a developer would have to take the Llama 3 model and basically create a, a creative writing version of it. I think that's totally possible, and we might see that from some of the bigger developers in the future. And we're certainly going to see a lot of models coming up on Hugging Face and all of these places uh, where you'll, you'll see models like that. However, I do want to just check the basic creative writing version of this model. And thankfully enough, we can actually do that in other programs. So if you come to Open Router, turns out the Llama 3, 8 billion and 70 billion parameter thing are already in Open Router. And you can come here and create an open, openrouter.ai account. And so if we wanted to just ask it something, you could do it here. Or since Novel Crafter integrates with Open Router, we can go straight to Novel Crafter and run our prompts there. So I have this standard story beat here that I want it to write. All you have to do is go to generate prose. I'm just gonna pick general purpose. And then down here at the bottom, you scroll through all the models that they have here. You can try for a spin and find all of the other models that aren't listed there. And so we're gonna scroll, scroll, scroll until we get here to uh, Llama 370B instruct. And that's the model we're gonna select and have it write this beat. First of all, it's writing relatively quickly. I mean, as I scanned the crowded street, her instincts on higher alert. She had grown accustomed to the darkness, but not the throngs of people that surrounded her now. The sounds of laughter, music, and horse hooves on cobblestone threatened to overwhelm her. For a moment, her vampire senses twitched, ready to spring into action. Jonathan, sensing her knees, placed a reassuring hand on her elbow. Steady, my dear, he whispered, his voice low and soothing. We're here for a purpose. Remember, we're merely attending an auction. Mina took a deep breath, her gaze darting to the elaborate entrance of the stone building. The strand, once a respectable address, now seemed to vibrate with an undercurrent of mystery and deceit. Okay, so it's not too bad, okay? I would say this is better prose than what I get out of the GPT models. That's not quite as over-the-top and flowery. However, I'm seeing a big issue with show-don't-tell issues. There's a lot of things like, she had grown accustomed to the darkness. Like, how could you show that instead of tell? We're not really in her head. It's just telling us what she's thinking which is a very different thing. And so show don't tell is one of those things that AI often struggles to get right. Claude seems to be the best at it so far, but even it really struggles with it sometimes. I do have a prompt that is in designed to enhance the show versus tell. 
it gets it right here and there, but I'm just gonna try it right here using Llama 3. So I'm gonna scroll down here until we get the 70B instruct just to modify this particular paragraph. And so we have instead, Mina's gaze darted through the crowded street, her pupils constricting as she swept her surroundings. The familiar shadow still lingered, but the sea of faces, the cacophony of laughter, music, and horses on cobblestone grated on her nerves. The din edged toward overwhelming, and for an instant her fangs lengthened, her muscles coiled like a spring. Jonathan, his eyes locked on her, grasped her elbow fir firmly, his gentle pressure a steadying anchor. So this is better, but still not what I would say is really good for showing versus telling. And by the way, it's doing this weird thing where it tells me what the edits that it did, and I don't really want that, so I'm going to have to tweak that prompt. But for the most part, like, it is better. But what it did more so than anything was just add kind of more flowery language instead of what it actually needs to do to get into Mina's deep point of view. So, all right, so not great. And by the way, I just tested out just now a, a little bit more of a not safe for work prompt and it did not do that. So there is some censorship with the Llama models. I don't know if that'll be the case for any of the models that are created on the back of Llama 3, but there is at least some level of censorship with it, at least when creating uh, intentionally explicit content. So let me know your thoughts if you've had a chance to play around with it. Again, I think that the biggest potential here is what we're gonna see from developers taking these models and then creating their own things with it because it's open source. I also see some big potential in the use of this kind of stuff just naturally integrated into social media. So creating fun little images and GIFs and enhancing a Facebook post or, or whatever it is that you're using it for. I think there's big potential there less potential in the writing of long form content, at least for now until a developer creates something more interesting. So those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next video.